This is Chris, the Guitar Amp Tech from Sydney, Australia. Today we will be starting a short series of hopefully short videos by a short engineer explaining the contributors to Tube SAG. SAG is a concert of interacting elements that's been understood by many, many people. And I'm going to do my best to remove some of the mysteries of SAG. Is SAG something that we should all aspire to? By the end of this series, you'll have a much better understanding of the contributors to SAG, which elements you like and which you don't. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, grab a coffee, pull up a chair, and let's get stuck in. Now, before we get started, do I need to state the bleeding obvious here? Just in case anyone watching this is an idiot with a death wish, let me make this crystal clear. Do not do what I'm describing here. I'm explaining, maybe educating, not directing you on what to do. When I'm working alone, I take lots of safety precautions to stay alive. I use an isolation transformer and I often wear gloves if there's a chance that I might brush my hand against some death invoking voltage. If you think that the correct way to test residual voltage of a filter capacitor is by touching your tongue against it, then turn off this video, pop your thumb in your mouth, climb into your wardrobe and gently rock yourself to sleep. Enough of the obvious warnings. Back to SAG. We've been told that tube amp SAG is something that we should all love. But should we? And what is SAG? Come to think of it, what is not SAG? In the end, you might say, I love SAG, or no way, SAG, get thee away from me. The reality is there's no correct answer. All I can say is, thank God, everyone's amp doesn't sound as good as mine, or else mine wouldn't stand out from the ordinary. Some of you will say that I've not covered X or I've oversimplified Z, but editing decisions need to be made. So please come along with me on this. So who am I to guide you through this land of SAG? I might tell my daughter and my partner that I am the font of all knowledge, but between you and me, I'm not even a cup of knowledge, let alone a whole font. I graduated from New South Wales University in 1981 in science and electrical engineering. Holy shit, that was 40 years ago. Yes, I know, you weren't even born then, blah, blah, blah. I went into engineering at the age of 17 so I could repair my Aussie-made Savage amplifier. Full disclosure, it still doesn't work. We're going to approach this explanation about SAG in several bite-sized chapters. Why? Well, my partner says that I can bore anyone to death once I start mansplaining things. So to save you from that fate worse than death, we're going to break it into some chapters. Some will be blissfully short, Others will be longer, much longer. First, we will look at sustain and the difference between compression and clipping to achieve sustain. Then we'll move on to capacitors and the vital role they play in the power supply of an amp. The third instalment, we'll be looking at rectifiers, both solid state and tube, slow and fast rectification. We'll have a look at what all that means. We'll also look at transformers um, and how they can have an impact on an identical circuit like the AB763. So uh, we've got a, a fair bit to cover. And uh, so if that sounds of interest, I think we should get started. What is sustain? Well. You know the answer to this. Sustain makes a guitar note last longer. When you hit a note with the guitar, the loudest part is the instant you hit it. From there it decays slowly or quickly, depending on the construction of the guitar, the materials of the nut, the saddle, the bridge, even the proximity of the pickups to the strings. But we'll come back to that another day maybe. It's hard to see what's happening here. There are so many overtones, so let's simplify our signal to a sine wave. Yes, I know it's a crap drawing, but it will get much worse than this. The height of our sine wave will depend on what sort of instrument we're playing. So let's say, for example, this is a Strat, 
maximum output is 0.2 volts and a Les Paul would be putting out 3 to 400 uh, millivolts, 0.3 to 0.4 volts. The loudest part of the note is when you first pick it. Oops, go away. And uh, it's, it just decays away to zero from there. On to the clipping. The name is very descriptive in itself. Imagine you wanted to have your uneven lawn all the same height. I hate this analogy, but mowing is one of my tasks that I got to confront today. So, you pull out your lawnmower and it cuts the heads off all the tall blades of grass until they are the same size as the short blades of grass. The same can happen with clipping. So here's our green pattern, is our normal signal, if our strat, and if we clip it to half that height, everything's now flattened. Here we have clipped the top. We can clip the top, we can clip the bottom, we can clip both. And that's um, you know, a topic we can come to another day discussing symmetric or asymmetric clipping. Our clipped waveform is now half the volume of the unclipped signal. Well, that's not really satisfactory. So what we're going to now do is we're going to amplify it. We're going to boost it right up. So as you can see, we've regained to the original volume and also that uh, the third waveform, the third peak here, um, which was not hitting the clipper, it's also been doubled in size because we, the gain is going to be applied to everything and so it is now louder. So we have actually now got sustain and sustain is going over two complete cycles and then gradually fading away. And obviously the more you clip and re replenish that gain, the greater the sustain is going to be, but also the greater the deformation of the original signal. It's going to sound really different. One of my favourite amps is the Roland JC120. But have you heard one go from that gorgeous clean to the ugly, hard distortion that it has? And that unintentional clipping is what gave solid state amps such a bad rap. Clipping a sine wave changes its shape. The more it's clipped, the more it becomes like a square wave. A square wave has many harmonics, some of which we like, many of which we may not. So, quick talk about what we mean by harmonics. The first harmonic can also be called the fundamental of a note. And Where's the guitar? Here we go. So, open E string we're going to say. That's the fundamental, also known as the first harmonic. Then if we go 12th fret and play that harmonic, that is our second harmonic. 5th fret is the third harmonic. So what's the relationship? We're going to call that open E. That's an occupier. When we go to the 12th fret and 5th fret, harmonic is the third harmonic, another octave above that. And why is that significant? Well, the string doesn't, it, wrote, it, it does this sort of thing. So the full wavelength of that E string is from the nut to there. Half of it is from the nut to the 12th fret. Half of that is the nut to the fifth fret. So that's the relationship. And a note on a guitar is built up of many, many harmonics and overtones. And that's from all different contributing factors of the instrument. If you want us to have a look at overtones and harmonics in a future video, let me know in the comments below. We need to look at this thing called Fast Fourier Transforms, FFTs you may have heard of. Gets pretty nerdy, but really interesting to a nerd. So let's look at a compressor. A compressor will reduce the size of the signal, but ideally not change its shape. It will reduce the size of the loud part and may increase the size of the signal as it starts to fade away. But it shouldn't clip or deform. So let's go back and have a look at my, my little drawing here, which 
I told you, it's going to get worse from here. So um, there's our strat signal here, and we're going to have this, introduce this term called threshold. And what that basically is doing is at, when the signal hits this threshold, it will start to reduce and uh, reduce the volume of that signal, reduce its amplitude. And it does this uh, at, a, at a rate which you set um, with another control on a compressor, which we won't go into the ratio. But let's say we've got it set to a, a moderate ratio. So then what we're going to get is once the signal hits that threshold, it's going to start to be reduced by the compressor. So in this case, our first wave, a bit over half, comes under here, under the point 0.1, and then once it gets close to the threshold, it's going to um, return and track it normally. How quickly it gets back to it is a factor of the release of the um, compressor. So once again, our signal has now been reduced in overall volume. Once again, we now need to compensate for all of that volume by adding in a gain factor, a volume increasing factor, and it'll end up being something like this. So once again, we have sustain created. Uh, the purple one is our compressor after reducing and then restoration of the volume. And you'll see the signal has been basically left unchanged and then it'll gradually start to fade away. So that is a compressor. So is tube amp sag more like clipping or more like compression? Well, neither. I mean both. I mean a bit of each. When a tube amp is pushed into overdrive, it will clip more softly than a transistor amp. The volume level will be less compared to the input because we've run out of headroom and we are nearing cutoff or saturation. It may feel like a compression, but a valve amp entering saturation has now changed the waveform, usually in a way that guitar players love. Some people have been known to put a compressor in the effects loop to simulate sag. This is different to putting a compressor before the amp. Why do you think it's so? Give me a suggestion below in the comments field. They're not going to act or sound the same way. Does it make a transistor amp sound more like a tube amp? Or can it make a big valve amp like a twin reverb sound like it's running flat out and sagging with the volume knob on two? Answer? Anyone? You over there? Mr. Smartass, what, what, what do you think? Aha, got you! No, it will not sound like tube sag. Let me tell you why. Compression is too perfect. It will reduce the signal peaks in a perfect way. A compressor in the effects loop will actually limit any saturation or clipping of a tube power stage. However, it may still add some nice squish to a solid state amp if you have a solid stamp, give it a go. Put in the effects loop if you've got one there and see what you think. It's not going to make it sound like a tube amp, but it's going to give you a little bit more of that squish. So what is tube amp sag then if it has both clipping and compression? Oh, not so fast. First, we need to discuss the role of capacitors and rectifiers, the dynamic duo of any amp. And that's what we're going to look at at the next chapter. If you've got something out of this video, could you please hit the like and the subscribe button? This video series took a fair bit of time, believe it or not, as you'll see. And by subscribing, it shows YouTube that I've been of service to you. I look forward to seeing you in the next chapter. See you soon.